So there's been a change to the knife curve brush. Let's talk, I'm gonna talk about that right up front. And then if you wanna stick around and see other knife brush functionality and how to use it with zero mesher and hard surface modeling, stick around. Uh, but right up front, control shift will narrow down your brush options to just modifier brushes. And one of those is knife curve. Go ahead and select that out of that menu option. Now, when we hold down control shift, this will do a knife curve operation. And then if you hold down space bar, you'll see this will bring up a menu and we have a new split the parts option. You can go ahead and turn that on. If you don't like using the control shift space bar menu, go in here to brush, clip brush modifiers, and there's the option right there. So control shift, uh, you can drag out a line with control shift held down and with your pin still on the tablet, you can let go of control shift. And now you can move this around freely. You can hold down space bar to position this line even more accurately. You can tap alt to do a bendy curve and then tap alt twice to do a sharp curve, let that go. And you'll see we've sliced through the object and it's got a masked part. If we undo that and tap X on our keyboard, that is symmetry, which again, transform, activate symmetry is toggled on across the X axis by default. If we turn on our floor, X axis is left to right in this case. So now we have symmetry turned on, same thing, control shift, drag out a line, alt tap once to make it bendy, alt tap twice to make it sharp, let go and you'll see it works across a mirrored axis. Hit W on your keyboard, and now you can move this piece down and you'll see what it did was generate geometry with the knife curve brush, and these objects fit perfectly together, so no gap being left behind. Uh, we'll talk about how to leave a gap uh, later on in this video if you wanna stick around. Uh, and that's basically it. So we can move this part down, we can control drag to unmask everything. We'll hit Q to go back into brush or draw mode. Control shift, we still have knife curve selected. Let's go over here and choose knife rectangle. Again, split the parts is still on. So if I hold down control shift and we do a knife rectangle right down the middle here uh, and then control tap in our document to invert that mask. If you want to, you can also go down to the masking menu and choose invert here if you want. You can hit W and again, you can move this piece of geometry down and this geometry fits perfectly right in that gap. Uh, I like to do just in case a geometry modify topology mirror and weld across the x-axis that just makes sure all the geometry is the exact same on both sides and there you go that's basically it so that's how you use again control shift choose one of the knife options in this case we'll choose knife curve hold down space bar choose split the parts or brush clip brush modifier split the parts go through here slice through an object control tap to invert your mask hit w go through here and move these parts around if you want to move them, uh, you know, apart with these two sides here, because we have X symmetry turned on again, you can move them up and down, hold down alt and then tap there. That'll inherit the surface normal and reset your pivot. If you hold down alt with the gizmo activated, it'll unlock the pivot. So you can basically go through here and just tap on the object. And now you can whoop, move that part across and there you go. That's the basic functionality of the knife curve split the parts brush. So again, stick around if you want to see more options. So now let's talk about some other options. And we'll start by how I created this box here with the nice even geometry. I'm gonna switch over to just a cube 3D. This is our primitive object and it's a white poly group that kind of clues us in. And if we try to sculpt on it, it'll say, hey, it's a poly, it's a primitive. You can't sculpt on it yet. Uh, you also see my geometry options are very, very, there's not a lot of them in there. So I can go down here, I can say initialize and I can make any changes in here I want. And when I'm ready to sculpt, all I have to do is go up here to tool hit the make poly mesh 3D button and we're ready to sculpt. I always like to tap X on my keyboard to turn on that, uh, activate that symmetry, hit W on my keyboard to bring up my gizmo. We can scale this down a little bit. Uh, also, I changed my, so we can see it a little bit better, my material over here to skin shader four. And now we have this object. Now, two problems. Number one, we have the polarized cap, which is gonna be not very pleasant to slice through or sculpt on. And also it's very low res. So if we hold down control shift and try to knife through here, you'll see uh, in that case, it wasn't too bad, but uh, if I, it doesn't have enough geometry to really maintain any tight corners that I put on here. So we'll hit control Z to undo that and we'll fix both these problems. We're gonna go in here to geometry, zero measure. I'm gonna say zero measure half. It's gonna look at our poly count and make it half. Uh, we're going to go down here to detect edges. It's going to look at our object and go, oh, these corners look like you might want to keep them nice and crispy and sharp. So I'll go ahead and make my topology with that in mind. And then we'll say adapt the size down to zero so we get nice even quads. Go ahead and hit zero measure and you'll see it's remeshed our object. It's creased our edges here. We're in really good shape. 
Now, it's still low res, so what I need to do is go in here and hit this divide button underneath geometry, or you can see the hotkey for that is control D. So divide, divide, divide. Yeah, we'll do four divides. We'll say, uh, well, if I don't say delete lower and I try to slice through, it's gonna tell us we have subdivision levels and I can't slice through that. So just hit delete lower. Now we just have geometry sitting here and we're ready to start slicing. So knife curve, we can go through here and we already know how to use that. Uh, we'll hit control Z. Control shift, space bar. We'll switch from split the parts to B radius. This is gonna do something very similar, but leave a gap behind. So it's gonna be based on our brush size. So how you change your brush size is changing the draw size up here at the top of your uh, menu toolbar. You can tap S on your keyboard to change the draw size, and you can hold down space bar on your keyboard and change the draw size here. And now, again, based on your draw size, if you hold down control shift with knife curve with B radius turned on, and that's again, control shift, space bar to turn on B radius, and then control shift, drag out your line, space bar to move it around, alt tap twice to make a short corner. And there, if we let this go, it's going to leave behind geometry, the width of our brush radius. And you also notice it didn't do it across X symmetry. Hit control Z, but we'll do the exact same thing. Control shift drag, alt tap twice. And before we let go of our pin from the tablet, hold down alt and let go. And that'll slice through the mesh, leave geometry behind, and leave a gap based on our brush size. So if we tap S on our keyboard, make our brush size bigger, go through here and do the exact same thing. Oops, but this time again, hold down Alt before you let go, it'll slice through and leave a gap that's larger. Now, if we want this to be mirrored, normally I would say geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld across the X axis. However, if I turn on my floor, and our x-axis is here and there's the middle of our world, it's gonna mirror negative x to positive x. We don't want that. We wanna keep this geometry, not mirror this unaffected geometry over. So we're gonna go down here to deformation. We're gonna say mirror across the x-axis. And now we can say geometry, modified topology, mirror and weld. You'll see going to those two menus takes a little bit of time. I like to have a custom menu with those two options right next to each other is mirror, mirror, and weld. If you wanna know more about that, go to my YouTube channel, intro to ZBrush. That'll get you information on how to set up your own custom menu and assign a hotkey to it. So we slice through here. Let's switch back, uh, control shift, knife curve, space bar. We'll turn off B radius, we'll turn on split the parts. And in fact, we'll switch over to knife rectangle and we'll put a big old slice right through the middle of here. And again, we can control tap to invert that W and we can move this piece down. And again, we can do one with a gap or we can do one that fits perfectly right in there. Uh, and if you wanna make your own gap, you can of course scale this down or just move this piece out and modify it however you'd like. I'm gonna move it down just so we can see the geometry because we're gonna talk about some Z remesher options. So control drag to unmask everything. We'll go ahead and turn off our floor. And again, just to make sure we have the same geometry on both sides, geometry modified topology, mirror and weld across the X axis. So let's talk about getting a little bit more usable geometry out of uh, the slicing and dicing that we're doing with brush radius and or split the parts. Uh, so right now you can see we have polygroups where the knife cut through uh, on our object. If I was a little bit more prepared, what I should have done way back here where we had our box is to do a polygroup group by normals. That would give me a polygroup on all sides of the object. If I didn't do that, it's still salvageable. If I skip forward in my history here, I can still go through here and say group by normals by max angle. And you'll see, uh, let's make this a little bit more obvious. Hold down control shift, switch back to select rectangle. Uh, you know, I should mention this. If you're in knife curve and you wanna switch to select rectangle, you can control shift, start dragging this out and then just tap control on your keyboard with your pin still held down. It'll temporarily switch back to a uh, select rectangle. So we can grab a little piece of this object Control shift A to visibility grow all. And now I can see all of this object uh, visibly. So now back to our polygroups menu here. If I do group by normals, you'll see it's gonna take all of our major normal changes or angle changes on our object and give it its own polygroup. In this case, there's a soft transition right through here. So it's gonna give us one polygroup for that. If I want, I can go through here and say, change that max angle down. It'll start picking up more differences in your angles. So now you have a polygroup here and a polygroup here. Or in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this at the default 45, I believe. 
So there, that's fixed that. Now you will see we have different polygroups on both sides. If you don't want that, make sure that you do again, control shift tap to bring all your geometry back. Geometry modified topology, mirror and weld. I'll use my custom menu there. And now we have polygroups on all of our major angles and it's mirrored across the x-axis. So now with those polygroups in place, I can use Ziri Mesher again to do some smart stuff for me. So Ziri Mesher, uh, we'll go ahead and keep half. We'll say in this case, we're gonna turn off detect edges. We're going to uh, turn on keep groups here and then smooth groups down to zero. They should be already smooth. We've sliced through the geometry, so we don't need to re-smooth it again. And then again, with all of those normal changes built in, I can say zero measure uh, again, half. Now, if it gives you an error, sometimes when you're doing these operations, it'll leave little pieces of geometry behind and zero measure really doesn't like that. So let's fix that. Let's switch back to select rectangle. And again, with that visibility grow all, control shift A, I'm gonna grab a little piece of this one, control shift A, control shift drag to invert that visibility. And then I'm gonna grab a little piece of this one with alt this time. And that's going to send the visibility of those pieces to our other piece. So I'm gonna control shift drag to invert that visibility, control shift A. So now what I've essentially done is, and you know, I guess you could do that in one base, I mean, we can also talk about this too. So I can also do, let's switch over here to control uh, shift and then select lasso. Basically what I want is just to grab a little piece of geometry from all of these objects. Control shift A to visibility grow all. And if I control shift drag, that'll invert my visibility. And you'll see, apparently there's like little floating vert. I can't even see them in here, but they do exist. And Zero Mesher knows they exist and it doesn't like them. So if I control shift drag here, and again, just to show that again, select lasso, grab a little piece of all your objects, control shift A, and then you know you have floating geometry just sitting there. Go to geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. That'll delete any weird geometry in here. So now when we go back here to zero mesher half, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, it should work. And there we go. It maintained our geometry. There looks like there is a slight little weird polygroup thing in here. That's kind of okay. I can, uh, again, just hit zero mesher here. If I need to help zero mesher out, I can switch over to my Z modeler brush, B, Z, M. I can hover over this face here, uh, start, hold down alt to start painting this polygroup and then tap shift to inherit that polygroup. And that'll just tell zero mesher, hey, I don't need a separate polygroup there. Work with me and then uh, yet again, do zero measure half if we want. We can keep doing that. Zero measure half, zero measure half, zero measure half. Nice, clean geometry based on our slices. Uh, if we want to, we can also go in here to geometry dynamic. So if we turn on D for dynamic, uh, we can say yes. That gives us a preview of what this would look like if we were to hit the subdivide button. Now, I don't want to hit that subdivide button because it's a little bit destructive. I don't want actual geometry. I just want to see what it would look like smoothed. Um, and in fact, we can go in here and say crease PG. Remember, all of our polygroups here have a border. So if we say crease PG, it will crease all of our polygroup borders and keep them nice and crispy. And that's totally cool too. So it's nice and smooth through here where it's all one polygroup. And then it's nice and sharp through here where we have multiple polygroups meeting uh, in one place. However, it still looks a little bit fake, you know, very CG, very sharp. We can actually play with that too, dynamically. So dynamic, we're gonna say crease level of say two and then smooth subdiv of three. And again, in my custom menu, I like to keep those right next to each other. So here's my crease level and smooth subdiv right next to each other. Uh, and that'll give us a little bit of a fall off there on our edges. So now we have, and in fact, let's switch this out to a green metallic. So now we have hard surface models, zero meshed, and uh, we can go through here and start box modeling stuff. So we'll switch back to Skin Shader 4, uh, Z Modeler Brush, B, Z, M. Uh, we can hold down Alt and we can kind of paint on these. We can hover over a face, hold down Spacebar, Q Mesh, Polygroup Ball. We can push these back in. You see, we still have a D or dynamic turned on. So it's giving us a preview. It didn't crease those edges just yet, but it did leave us polygroups, which means we can go down here and say Crease PG. And there we go. So now we're going through here, we're box modeling uh, to our heart's content. Again, we'll just go through here, I'll hold down Alt and paint across here, and then we'll pull this out. And again, we'll go through here. In this case, this is all one polygroup. So if we say crease PG, it kind of leaves those soft. So we're gonna average. So we're gonna hover over an edge this time with our Z modeler brush, hold down space bar, and we can go through here manually and we can say crease edge. So in this case, I can like, you know, crease this corner. Oop, 
crease that corner edge. If it's kind of hard to go in here and crease that edge, just do shift D to temporarily turn off dynamic and then you can say, oh, there's that edge, boom, perfect. And now when I hit D again, those will be nice and crispy. Another option to do is, uh, again, if we hit shift D, you'll see these angle changes are pretty prominent. So all I have to do is go back in here. In fact, I can even uncrease all in our crease menu. I can do another group by normals, set the max angle to pick up all your major polygroup normal changes, geometry modified topology, mirror and weld. Uh, again, if you turn on D for dynamic, we turned off all of our creasing so it's all soft, but remember, just hit a quick crease BG, D for dynamic, and there you go. Now you can go through and again, just crease all of your polygroups. So you can go through here again, Q mesh will cut through geometry. And you don't even have to use polygroups. You can literally go in here to crease, just use this crease with a crease tolerance, just like polygroup with an angle tolerance where it'll give you a polygroup here and a polygroup here based on that angle change. Crease will do the exact same thing. So you can just hit crease with a tolerance of 45. It'll go ahead and crease those for you. So that way, go through here and you can slice, dice, zero mesh, box model with Z modeler, et cetera, et cetera and you can move all these things around. Now, speaking of, if you do want to move this piece back, uh, you can, you know, control shift, drag over a piece of it, control shift A, mask and invert that. And in fact, there is new ZBrush 2024 functionality for masking where you can mask a piece of this and then go up here or down here to the masking menu and there is a mask grow all. It will mask the entire object here. So you can, instead of just growing your mask, you can actually grow all your mask very quickly. You can assign a hotkey to that too or put it in your custom menu. FYI. Also, since we're talking about ZBrush 2024, you can go in here. Let's say uh, we'll do an uncrease all. You can hold down control and we'll just uh, hold down control and alt to unmask this bottom area here. There is a new option in here oh, under your crease options here for crease unmasked. So any unmasked areas in here will go ahead and crease those poly groups or those polygons. So that's another option for you. Now, let's say uh, I'm going to go back through here and we'll say crease PG. I want to move this entire object. If I want to move a poly group, I can control tap that poly group. But again, it's just going to move that poly group. If I want to move this object, one thing I can do is I can go into our poly group menu and I can say auto groups. So anything that's not vert welded or isn't touching verts, basically, it'll give it its own polygroup. Of course, I want to do another geometry modified topology mirror and weld so that I have same polygroups on both sides. Hit W. And now when I control tap these objects, it will unmask them and allow them to be easily moved, etc. Now, I did lose my polygroups, but they're easy enough to get back, right? Just go in here, say group by normals, geometry modified topology, mirror and weld, and you're right back where you started. Another kind of a quick one here too, is if you go into your move brush, go down here to auto masking, turn on topological and change your brush size down to one. Then you can go through here and just kind of move objects around um, based on, you know, them just not being uh, part of the same topology. So a couple different options to go through, use the knife functionality, brush radius, or our new split the parts as well as zero meshing to get nice sculptable geometry and or box modely geometry with your Z modeler brush. Speaking of, if you're new to Z modeler and you don't know what that is, again, go to this intro to ZBrush playlist. There's all sorts of stuff in here, including I think three or four videos on just dynamic subdivisions and box modeling. So it'll go a little bit slower and uh, be a little bit easier to digest just that functionality. But anyway, have fun with that split the parts. If there's any other really cool hard surface split the parts uh, things that you can do, put them in the comments so I can maybe do a follow-up video explaining other cool ways to use this type of brush.